Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. Do I got a good video for you today? Kids are actually given prison food from around the world and their reactions. Kid videos are great. Before I get started, everybody, please check me out on YouTube member programs, Patreon member programs, Discord, a lot going on there. Check out all of our uh, merch, everything you're doing. Check out the book, Gangster Redemption. It's going crazy, everybody. With that said, let's get into this video. This video I like because it's a, listen, kid reaction videos you can't go wrong with. I, I mean, I just think they're great. Kids say it like it is. Kind of like me, I guess maybe I'm a big kid. Let's get going. If you had to eat this every day, what would you think? Is this like all they eat? Or is there like Taco Tuesday? First of all, I quit eating meat in Atlanta when I chip the tooth on bone. Now when you eat bone that's in meat, it's the worst part of the cow. They're scraping it right near the bone and they actually put it in. And, and we had hamburgers like that. It was just, it, I, I look back at what I ate and I go, holy Toledo. I mean, I literally ate this shit. And you know, in prison, the food, listen, we had what they call, you guys won't remember, 1992 was Desert Storm. Now, I am in Atlanta in 1997, five years. Well, there's boxes of meat that are marked Desert Storm, and they wouldn't take them. So what did they do? They gave the, the meat to the prisoners. It, it boggled to my mind, and anybody who's ever been to prison, you know, it's funny. You ask anybody who's been to prison, anybody, you ask them what they miss most, and they're not gonna, everybody thinks, Oh, what do you miss most, sex? No, you're gonna say food, just the way it is. You're gonna miss food more than you're gonna miss anything else. You know, food lasts longer than sex, I'll go into all that kind of stuff, and it boggles my mind why we have to treat people like that. Now, do they deserve to get a gourmet meal? No. What do you know about prison? Prison. You go in there if you do something that's not okay. It's a bad place. They have bad food there. I don't think prisoners need to have the best, most fanciest food. Well, we are going to find out because you are trying prison food from around the world. Isn't that just kind of like kids, they have no concept of what even prison is, but you'd be surprised. At least they know it's not a good place to be. So someone's teaching them right there. And I give them a lot of credit there. The first place is United Arab Emirates. Now, this is the big controversy right now, Dubai. Dubai is, is in the United Arab Emirates and this is where uh, I guess food is just different. Now, I'm not gonna go into the cultural differences of food, everybody. I'm just gonna go about what I see on that plate. Now, I see on this plate right here, actually a decent meal. I do at least. Now, how is a meal prepared and how is it cooked and everything else has a lot to do with it. But don't get me wrong, the your prison is in there cooking. They don't want to make a bad meal for the people. You know, you're a good cook and you're out there doing the right thing. You're gonna, one, you're getting kickbacks from everybody in prison. When I was in prison, I had the kitchen. I had a guy named Frankie. He worked in the officer's mess and he used to end up being my cook. I had a cook. I know you all thinking, fucking Larry, how do you have a cook in prison? You pay for him. Uh, well, Frankie uh, was my cook and I used to get sandwiches and different pasta dishes and steaks. I, I really did live a different life when I was in Coleman. That was in Coleman. And uh, I'm, I'm looking back and probably the best food around was maybe Coleman or Jessup again. Those are the two best prisons and I remember. But let's look at this. Eek. You wanna dig in? Yeah, but where's the fork? In this prison, the inmates actually eat their food with their hands. Wait. With my hands? Then you mix it all together. <laughs> Good? I mean, in prison, I wouldn't really trust where my hands have been. I wouldn't want to use my hands to eat. You know, that is funny how the kid said that. I wouldn't trust my hands. Where have my hands been? I get it. I mean, you know, but still, it's you. I mean, the hands don't bother me except for messy. Uh, I've ate with my hands. I literally had to eat with my hands like that. Uh, many times they wouldn't give you utensils in the hole. That usually in the hole. When you're in the hole, you're at the mercy of what they put through that slot in the door. 
And when you're real hungry, trust me, you'll eat anything. They're eating with their no hands because they're weapons. Obviously, weapons are made out of everything in prison. And if you see forks and knives, real knives and forks, they're going to be weapons. You're not going to see a real knife in prison. You're not. You're lucky if you saw a fork in prison. They're usually plastic. They were all plastic. Decent plastic, if you want to call them that. But listen, you can make a shank out of plastic that's going to kill you anyway. So uh, I, I'm not understanding that either. Uh, it's just a matter of control. I really think everything is about control in prison. Uh, this food, I thought was pretty good. Seemed pretty good. They didn't have what we called in prison as the mystery meat. We used to call it mystery meat. Because nobody knew what the fuck it was. You didn't know if it was a, a pork chop or a, or a, you know, a pork or a beef or a chicken. You didn't know it. It's literally what it was, mystery meat. Do you think giving someone like unhealthy or gross food is torture in a way? If I ate this every day, it'd make me pretty crazy. I can never eat this every day. Is this kid cute? She don't care, she wants to eat, guys. I look at that and I say, sometimes I think I was like that. You know, when I got out of prison, uh, people used to say, Larry, Slow down, nobody's gonna take your food. To this day, I'm a very fast eater. Uh, I go out with my friends and they go, look at him, he's still in prison. I have a very protective way of my food. Uh, when you had food and, and, and that's all you had, you protected it. Uh, the speed comes from, you might have something to do in prison, like get to the yard before a move closed or something like that. And uh, you didn't have to eat as fast as you know you see. You didn't have to do that. And when it got down to it, uh, guys, I pretty much ate, didn't eat in the kitchen too much. I ate what they call off the commissary. That means I had to buy my stuff and you know the meals, which is another meal coming up. Ooh, that smells horrible. Oh my God. <laughs> this does not look fully cooked. It's like a sardine. Where do you think this is from, Celine? Maybe China? This is from Singapore. Pretty good guess right off the jump street too, China. And the smells, listen, prison didn't even have smells. It really didn't, it was just so bland. I'm lucky I was never a major, I never bitched about food, I never did. Obviously I'm a big guy. Uh, but you don't eat like you do in, in the streets, guys. I want you guys to think of this today when you go eat. I don't care where you're going, what you're doing, when you go eat. I want you to think of this. Think of right now, somebody's in prison in a tray, they have the food trays, and they're eating that shit for the rest of their life. Rest of their life, they're gonna get a shit like that. Makes me think about all the stuff that's important and assures that you know all the bullshit everybody thinks is important. How about food? Pretty important to me. So in Singapore, they have to eat all of their food on the ground. They have to sit in their cell, and it's kind of like slid to them through a hole. I wish there was like a little teeny tiny table. Can they eat on their bed? So they actually don't have a bed. Look what they're doing to these kids though. They give them bananas. They give them stuff they know. I love that. These kids are cute though. I don't know, I love kids. What can I say? I right, look at this next dish, everybody. Philadelphia, USA. Now, it says pasta, cube, carrots, grains, brownie, white cake. What kind of meat is that? Sure is it a Philly cheesesteak. But you know, even this, compared to some prisons I was in, wasn't bad. I mean, you know, they, they when they have a tray comes in. So first, the tray like that tray you're looking at right now is not the trays we have. They're metal. We had plastic trays, number one. And the plastic trays themselves uh, had a little, two little tops and a bigger bowl, and that's it. And then they give you usually like a milk or a uh, uh, jungle juice, something like that. That's what your juice was. And that was your meal in the hole. Whoa, this looks like what I see in movies. It doesn't look good. Pasta does not taste that great. This is not good. <laughs> no? No. What country do you think this is from? In Mexico? Or maybe Italy? England? This is from the USA. 
It's amazing how kids, wherever you're from, I guess, I guess this is American, you're never gonna say your country's the worst. It's just not, not what we're gonna do. And again, what pisses me off about right now what's going on with the United States and the Live Golf uh, World Championship is uh, they're trying to bring human rights into this uh, argument. Well, I think they better step back. Don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. And that's what's happening. Every single country, the United States, worst prison system in the free world, an insurrection supported by a former president of the United States. Think of that. We're not looking like some uh, uh, non-third world country, everybody. So my point to you is, I get it. We all love our countries. Just be a little bit more objective. I'm not saying don't love your country, because I love my country. I love the United States. Let's move on. The U.S. alone spends up to $182 billion every year on prison. What? Well, I mean, like, they give us brownies. So, like... So that price makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Where'd all the cake go? I think you ate all the cake, Celine. Our kid's cute. I'm telling you, this, this video just gave me a big smile. That's all it did. I'm trying to talk about prison food, and it's hard for me because I love food. Obviously, I'm a 250-pound man, but I, I, I got such a, a bad memory of everything. You know, one of you guys said something in a video that I did about PTSD came out. I don't see it. Obviously, it's there. I have PTSD. It's probably pretty severe. Could I snap? There's no question. I think anybody could snap. You don't want to see me snap. I can tell you that. I'm not saying any. I'm not the tough guy anymore, but I know what I'm capable of. That's what makes it tough. I'll tell you what, PTSD, food brings me this PTSD because I'm thinking back and I'm getting madder and madder about what they did to us and how they now made a bonus and I didn't know that. When they cut the food costs, they're making money. The warden's getting a bonus. Think of what I just said. They cut food costs, so who cares? It's just the inmates getting less shitty food. And what do they do? They get, an, they get awarded for that. Just, it boggles my mind. Boggles my mind on an incentive system like that. But it is what it is. Let's look at Australia. Macaroni salad, couscous, jerk chicken, ration wow, and berry yogurt. I don't know, looks a lot better than American food. That's good. So this is from the Alexander Makanoki Center, which describes itself as a human rights compliant jail. Sounds like a bit nicer of a jail. Like in their minds would be like, oh, these people are human. They probably have reasons to do this. They have rights too. Exactly. So there are like 300 prisoners here and it has like a town square. So there's like a health building, an education building, a library, a visiting center. Whoa! I learned a lot there uh, about that in Australia, what they're doing. And you know, Australia, what people don't know is a penal colony. It started as where they put the prisoners. So, hey, live and learn. You know, when you think about that, we're all prisoners in our own right. In our own way, we're all prisoners. It's a matter how you handle, how, how do you handle everything? And that's exactly what it is. I mean, I think if you treat a prisoner more like a human than an inmate, they'll probably feel like, oh, I'm being treated as a human. I can still live a normal human life. If I ever want to do, I go here. Is that cute? This video had me laughing, but it also had me looking back and saying, man, I don't believe I, I, I went through that shit. Now, a lot of people are gonna be looking at me and saying, Larry, look at you. Look at what happened when you got food. You're a fat fuck now, and they're probably right. Let's just put it this way. I'm going for a colonoscopy, and it's probably because of the shit I ate in prison. Kids say it right. You know, they don't wanna to go to prison. I don't wanna to go to, I, I don't want anybody to go to prison. We all know that. I, I'm a big advocate against prisons. Uh, we do need them, so don't ever think for one second Larry's like that, and, and Larry's a person that's gonna say, oh, just, you know, close. I don't even think they should close Rikers Island. That's not my, my thought. Uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I have my thoughts and I have my, my uh, suggestions on what prisons can do and everybody can do and what, it, what they have to do with people in the whole stuff of that name. I have my thoughts. I have my suggestions. Obviously, if we're in a prison and somebody's stabbing somebody, what are you gonna do with them? Kumbaya? No. You gotta stop the whatever violence is going on and you have to separate people. So what do you do then? You gotta bring them to a segregation unit. 
after they find out what's going on is my problem. They keep people in there too long. They don't have any kind of uh, rehabilitation end of it. And if you really want to get deep into this, when they take good time away from you in these so-called DHO hearing, disciplinary hearing officer hearings, which is bullshit because they you never win. When they take 28 days from you, they're really sentencing you illegal. Think about that. And that's been won in court. But they don't give a shit. That's the Bureau of Prisons. They don't give a fuck about too much. They will do, and they will do anything they want. That's just the way it is, guys. And, and none of us can help that. Food in prison, let's just put it this way. I like watching kids. Even kids know you have to treat people right. It's when people become jaded, people become a negative towards the whole system that nothing gets done and nothing gets changed. Status quo keeps going and abuses keep going. Until the prison system or any officials really want to ask me what's going on, and I'm telling you a lot of you guys, I can tell them. I can give them a system. If they come and they want to hire me up there, I will fix that prison system and I can do it. I really can do it. I just went all over the state of Florida. I can do it. And FDLA has been changed from it. And they're very happy with what's going on. But what can you say about the, the here in America? They don't give a fuck. Simple as it is. Simple as it is, everybody. All right, everybody. You know, I've been having like a little brain fog. <laughs> I'm not going to call it meth fog like um, a meth head mic, which is a whole entire uh, video, I think with what's going on to him. And I, and I hope to find out real soon. So you will get that news the minute I get it. Get with the program, I, I, I try to say with people. Enjoy what we're doing. I really mean that. You know, I've been having a lot of uh, uh, success lately in a, in a bunch of different ways. The podcast, The Real Deal With Me, Larry Lawton, has it, been a big success. We're moving forward on a lot of uh, show ideas and everything else. As you can see, this whole studio is getting put together and stuff of that nature. So. Lots going on here. You're going to see a whole bunch of stuff. My cigar is coming out, everybody. Uh, you're going to see the actual prototypes and everything of the cigar. So this is pretty good, and it's pretty exciting for me. Anyway, guys, please give us your suggestions. I'm doing a couple movie reviews, TV show reviews. Please make good choices, everybody. I don't want to see. I'd rather see you curse me out on YouTube than get into trouble with the police or get in, in a bad situation with anybody. Uh, try to help somebody. Hold the door open for me. You know, I look at young people today and I have hope because uh, they're not depressed and sitting against the wall because they don't know where the ne next meal is coming from. Sad as it is, that's what's happening. And it, it has happened in here and it is happening in the United States and it is still sad. All right, everybody, please stay safe. I will see you Thursday. Have a great day. Check us all out. The podcast, The Real Deal with me, Larry Lawton, every Monday and Friday. Our videos are sticking to Tuesday, Thursdays, and Sundays. Any suggestions you have, please write them in the comments because I do read them. Or if I don't read them, somebody reads them. Every single comment. Have a great day, everybody. See you soon. And again, thanks for your support.